a two. Officially, I guess, I titled it Circles and Ellipses. 99% of the time, we're going to be talking about ellipses. But what is a circle? A circle is going to be a specific form of an ellipse. Okay, so an ellipse is going to be elongated, so it's going to be more oval-like, whereas a circle is just a one particular form where it's not elongated. Okay, so as we talk about ellipses, we are essentially talking about circles. Okay, so they won't come up a whole bunch, but just keep, keep that in mind. Official definition. An ellipse is the set of all points in a plane whose distance from two fixed points have a constant sum. Okay, so right here, I tried to give you pictures, diagrams, things to help. As we look at this first ellipse, the idea that the ellipse, so my blue ellipse here, my curve, is a set of all points in a plane whose distances from two fixed points, so F1 being a fixed point and F2 being a fixed point, this point right here, the sum of the one distance plus the other distance is going to be the same if I pick, say, a point down here. Those two distances would add up to be the same as the two distances from the other point. If I move to a different point, any point I pick on this ellipse is going to have that same sum of the two distances. Okay, That's the official definition of an ellipse and how you create an ellipse. Now, vocabulary. There's lots and lots of vocabulary here. Okay, The fixed points are called the foci. So right here, the F1 and F2, those are your foci, which is plural for focus. So in a parabola, we had a singular focus, right? That focus was inside the parabola. Well, in an ellipse, we have not one focus, but we have two focuses, thus the word foci. So in an ellipse, you have two focuses or two foci on opposite ends of that primary axis there. Okay. The line through the foci is called the focal axis. So this main line here that goes from one foci to the other is your focal axis. The point halfway through the focal axis is called the center. So we have one center point that's in the middle of your ellipse. The points where the ellipse intersects its axis are the vertices, plural for vertex, of the ellipse. So we have not one vertex, but two vertice, vertexes, in other words, vertices. Okay, you have a vertex at one end, of your main axis and at the other end of your main axis. So your vertices are always at the longer ends of the ellipse. Okay, it's always the longer ends of the ellipse. The longest line going midway through the ellipse, passing through the foci, is called the major axis. So what I'm saying here is that basically from vertex to vertex, that is your major axis. Okay, so from one vertex to the other vertex is your major axis. And then the shorter line going midway through the ellipse is called the minor axis. So the minor axis would go this way through the center, right? And so the length, and I don't have a good place to put it, so... I'm labeling it over here, but this distance is called your minor axis. Okay, so your major axis is always the longer distance of the ellipse, no matter which whether the longer distance is horizontal or vertical. Major axis is always longer. Minor axis is the shorter width across the ellipse. Okay, that's a little bit of vocab that list of vocab is going to be there, right? So if you get to doing something, you can't remember what something is, go back and look at the picture. Now, like parabolas, we're going to have two charts. But we're going to go and learn one chart first. We're going to do some practice problems with it. And then we're going to go work on the other chart and do some practice problems with that. Okay? Now, the first chart we're looking at are ellipses that are centered at 0, 0. 
So ellipses that have not translated, where their center point is at zero, zero. Okay? Just like parabolas, we have two columns. With parabolas, we had two columns because one column was the parabola's opening up or down. The other column was the parabola's opening left or right. Okay. Well, we have two columns here. We have one column where your parabola's focal axis or main axis is the horizontal axis, the x-axis. We have the other column where your main axis is the y-axis. So basically, the left column are going to be for parabolas that are longer. Your second column is going to be for parabolas that are taller. Does that make sense? Okay, so I always call this first column, it's my horizontal parabolas. These are my, the second column is my vertical parabolas. Okay, so do you realize that this column, or maybe I should, okay, this column goes over here, this column goes down here. Now, standard equation looks a little different. Standard equation for an ellipse in the left column is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Okay? In this left column, the focal axis is the horizontal axis, the x-axis. So the from vertice to vertice is the x-axis, the x-axis. Your foci are plus or minus c comma zero. So your foci, which are right here, it's inside your ellipse, are c values, and they are on the x-axis. Your vertices, which are at the long ends of your ellipse, are your a values. So foci are always represented by c. Vertices are always represented by a's. Now, this changed from my last set of notes. And then I copied this chart as opposed to typing out a chart similar to what I'd used last time. But what they're saying here, the semi-major axis. When we talk about semi-major axis, it's a half-major axis. I should have looked up a definition there. But semi-major axis is half of the major axis. Well, I told you the major axis goes from vertex to vertex, yes? So what they're saying is semi-major axis is just half of the distance. And so they're saying that half of the major axis is A. Semi-minor axis, they're saying half of the minor axis is B. Now, here's what I'm going to say. I don't see the words semi-major and semi-minor in the homework questions. What I see, unless they totally changed the homework questions and I missed it, and how did I do this? What I see them saying is that they usually just refer to the major axis and the minor axis. So what I'm going to write in the middle of my chart, the major axis, well, if half of the major axis is A, what's the whole major axis? 2A. If half the minor axis is B, what's the whole minor axis? To be. Because again, when they start giving us questions and we're trying to write an equation or find vertices or foci or something, they don't usually say the semi major axis has this length. They say the major axis has this length. Okay? And then in ellipsis, and this will be true in hyperbolas too, but it'll be different, we have something called a Pythagorean, Pythagorean relationship. Now, did I say Pythagorean theorem? No. no, it's a Pythagorean relation. It's based on the Pythagorean theorem, but our Pythagorean relation here is a squared equals b squared plus c squared. And what that's showing here, folks, is that, so I guess I never talked about, well, I talked a little bit about b. So b is the distance from the center out to the ends of the minor axis, right? So this distance is B here. The distance out to the foci is C. A is the relation right there, the hypotenuse. And so that's why we have A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. Okay? Now, where are we going to use this Pythagorean relation? There will be often times 
where maybe you know A and C and you need to find B. Or maybe you know A and B and you need to find C. Anytime we're looking for one of our missing A, B, or Cs, we're going to use our Pythagorean relationship. Okay, that's where you want to keep it ready to go. Okay, that's your left column. Is the right column a whole lot different? Not a whole lot different. Kind of like how the parabola had two columns. Now, notice what's true here. It's y squared over a squared comes first, plus x squared over b squared. What's going to happen here is that in the second column, y squared is going to be over the bigger number. Okay? That's what's going to happen here. Technically, you have to watch for them to trick you. They can switch it around. The key is that A will always be the bigger value between A and B. Okay? A is always going to be the larger value in an ellipse. Um, on this case, the focal axis, this is a vertical hyperbola, or ellipse, so it's a y-axis. That means my foci are 0 plus or minus C because they're on the y-axis. My vertices are 0 plus or minus A because they're on the y-axis. Semi-major axis, half of the major axis is still A. Half of the minor axis is still B. And you have the same Pythagorean relation. Okay? Now, best recommendation I can say, let's try and put this together and do some problems. Okay? And just jump right in and practice. So at the bottom of this page, we have a couple of problems that work with this chart. Sorry, I'm just copying this information over to my next page. Okay, example one. Find the vertices and foci of this given ellipse. 4x squared plus 9y squared equals 36. They told us this is an ellipse, yes? They're saying that this is the equation of an ellipse, so we're not questioning that. With this in mind, does this look like what an equation of an ellipse is supposed to look like according to our chart? No. Because if you look up in the chart, and we don't know which column we're talking right now, right? But if we look up in the chart, we should see fractions, shouldn't we? And more importantly, what's the equation supposed to equal? One. Your equation has to equal one for me to use all this information about A, B, and C. Okay? So, my question to you, how do I make this equation equal one? Subtract 37. What? Disagree. Oh, wait. 35. Let's go a different route. Okay. What? <laughs> I agree, 36 minus 35 would make you one. That's where the route I want to go. Okay. okay. So, to make this 36, she was going for negative one. We'll just go with it. To make this 36 become a one, we're going to divide by 36. What you do to one side, you do to both sides. Or in this case, we do to every single term. Yes? Now, 4x squared over 36. What do you know about 4 over 36? True? Yeah. So 4x squared over 36 could be reduced and written as x squared over 9. Okay, plus... 9y squared over 36. What do you know about 9 over 36? It's 1 fourth. So how are you thinking we're going to write 9y squared over 36? Y squared, y squared over 4. Equals 36 over 36 is 1. Is this looking a little more like... A standard form up there. Okay. It's looking a little bit more like our standard form up there. Now, and I did not leave myself enough room here, but one thing to think about real quick. Um, nine and four. What do you know about nine and four? 
if nine is in place of a squared, how could nine? How could we think of nine? Could we think of it as three squared? So I'm just trying to get you guys to think about this, that this is also x squared over 3 squared plus y squared over 2 squared equals 1. And I'm just making you think that way because this is our first problem. That's a good name. Okay, and we need to see that. Now, does this look like an ellipse equation now? Absolutely. Okay. Now, it looks like an ellipse. Our job is to find the vertices and the foci. Nope, that was us just trying to do the pre-work here. Now, first of all, let's decide. Is this a left equation, left column equation, or right column equation? Left. Why left? Because the x is first. Okay, more important than the fact the x is first. Because... Could I take those two pieces and flip the order? Oh, yeah. The bigger number is under x. Okay. The bigger number is under x. So because the bigger number is under x, this does make it a left column here. Okay? And I feel like I'm going to make a note up here that a is... Always mm. I guess I don't want to say the larger value because I always I'm gonna say I guess greater than B. Okay. So okay. If we're using the left hand column, what is my equation for the vertices? What form are vertices going to be in? A. Plus or minus A, comma, zero. So that means I need to know what? A. I need to know A. <coughs> what is A? Nine. No. Three no. Three. Oh, what? I'm being nitpicky. Plus or here. minus three. Three. Plus or minus three. Plus just minus three. Nine. How about just three? Okay. Here's the deal. Nine is in the position of a squared, yes? So three squared is, is, is in the position of a squared. So can you follow the argument that a is three? Okay. A squared is equal to three squared. So thus a is three. So if a is three, and my vertices are plus or minus a comma zero. What are my vertices? Or I just wrote them as plus or minus three comma zero. You can. Oh, sweet. Did I sell you on my vertices? This is going well. I just know it's not. What's the other piece we were asked to find? Oh, guy. Okay. My foci. What's my formula for foci? Plus or minus c, Plus or minus c comma zero. Okay. We know a is three. What else do we just know by looking at this equation? We know b is two. Okay, because keep in mind, folks, I never wrote this, but we're using the form x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1, right? That's the form we're using and comparing everything to. So if a is 3 and b is 2, is c in my equation? No. No. What about c then? Any time out of A, B, and C, you know two of the three, and you need to find the third? Pythagorean relation. Every single time. Okay? So we're going to use 
Now, it's a squared equals b squared plus c squared, right? Don't let your brain overtake you and do normal Pythagorean theorem. Okay? So, what do we have? 3 squared equals 2 squared plus c squared. Are you with me? 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. Subtract the 4 over from the 9. And c squared, pause that, c squared is? Well, if I'm just on c squared right now, c squared is 5. Are we okay with c squared is 5? Yeah. Because you had 9, subtract over the 4. I just don't have the room, sorry. I did not, okay. I was trying to squeeze too much on this page. That's my big mistake here. So what is C? C is the square root of 5. Now, I know, that's why I was just looking to see what I, officially, and I had mixed emotions. Officially, you can say plus or minus, but here's the deal. When we go to put this in the equation, what's the equation already say? Plus or minus. So if you just tell me that C is square root of 5, as long as when you tell me the foci have plus or minus, that's what matters. Because the, the formulas already have the plus or minus there. So what are my foci? Plus or minus square root of 5, comma, 0. Will it always be a square root? No. It could work out to be a nice, neat whole number. Okay. It's a 50-50 shot, honestly. Okay, but it is not uncommon to have square roots. Okay. Questions on that one? And I'm going to tell you guys, like parabolas, every problem's a little different. Pros and cons, right? Okay, let's look at example two. Find an equation of the ellipse with foci 0, negative 3 and 0, 3, whose minor axis has length 4, and sketch the ellipse. We're using the other side. Yep. Why? Because the 0 is before the plus or minus in the foci. Okay. Oh, let's see what I did there. Are you guys looking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right here, as you look at your foci, Notice it's of the form 0, negative 3, and 0, positive 3. Which side does that match up with? That matches up with this. So that means the equation we're going to be trying to fill in here in the end is y squared over a squared plus x squared over b squared equals 1. Can we agree that that's our goal in the end? And that's because Emma identified that, oh, these are zero comma number for my foci. That matches the second column here. Okay? Now, what else do those foci tell me then? Your C value is plus or minus 3, and your B value is 0. Okay. So because my foci are in the form 0, comma, plus or minus C, right? That's what it comes from the chart. Then I know that C is 3. And I tend to just write C is 3 here. If you want to write plus or minus 3, more power to you. Are we all good that C is, can we agree C is 3? Yeah. Okay. What else is given information here? The minor axis has a length of four. Oh wait, no, it doesn't. Okay. So and this is why I threw this up here because the questions tend to be formed like this. The question does this question say anything about the semi minor axis? No. No. Now keep in mind the semi minor axis is just half of the minor axis. So it like but two. and it's gonna get you the same way. So the minor axis we usually think of as two B. So that means if the minor axis has length 4, 2b is equal to 4. And if 2b is 4, then b is 2. And now we can do the Pythagorean theorem. 
Korean relation, right? Okay. My job is to find write the equation. Well, to write the equation, I need A and B. I currently have B and C. What have I been saying already? Anytime you know two of your three ABCs, Pythagorean relation. So A squared equals B squared plus C squared. So A squared is 2 squared plus 3 squared. Did you guys get the same thing I did? Yeah. A is the square root of 13. And you can say plus or minus if you want. I have it in my notes sometimes, you know. So, we found C is 3. We found B is 2. We found A is the square root of 13. Now, with that in mind, do we have the information to write the equation? Yeah. We know A and B. That's all we need to write the equation. It said find the equation. We're writing the equation. So Y squared over A squared. So that's going to be Y squared over square root of 13 squared plus X squared over b squared, so x squared over 2 squared equals 1. Now, I, we're early on, so that's why I wrote it in that format. Is that the format I really want you to finish with, though? No. no. What is the square root of 13 squared? 13. It is 13. What is 2 squared? Oh, 4. So, yes, I would prefer that you put it as y squared over 13 plus x squared over 4 equals 1. That is what I would be looking for. Okay? Now, what's the other part we got to learn to do here? Put it back into the form of a... No. We got sketch. Oh! <laughs> okay. Because besides just working with the ellipse... And be able to find your ABCs, your foci, your vertices. Be able to take that information and write your equation. We also need to be able to see, okay, how do we how do we sketch the ellipse? So now, this ellipse. We're on page one of the notes, right? This ellipse is centered where. Zero, zero. Okay? So we know it's centered at zero, zero. That's the center point we're working from. I think, well, oh well. I counted four up and down and three left and right just for to have some tick marks on this uh, axis here. Okay, since this is centered at zero, so your A value and your B value tell you how far to count out from the center. Now, in this case, what is A? A is yuck. A is the square root of 13. What is the square root of 13 as a decimal? Let's check. It's 3.6. 3. 3. Okay. For approximation purposes, 3.6. Okay. So your A value tells you how far to count. Now, what is A under in this problem? It's under Y. So in the Y direction, which the Y direction is, Ys go up and down. So on the Y axis, we're going to count up 3.6 and down 3.6. Okay, these are, we're doing this one right here. So we're going to count up A and down A. So we're going to count up 
3.6. And we're going to count down 3.6. And I could label those as 3.6s, but I'm trying to get you guys to see that that's your A. And my A values, why did they go up and down in this problem? Because they're, un they're paired with the Y. Now, B, what is B? So you're going to go over 2. Okay. B is 2. We're on this parabola, so we're going to be going left 2 and right 2 because B squared is under the variable X, and X's go left or right. So we're going to go over 2 in each direction, and those represent your B values. Okay, guys, that right there, those four points form your ellipse. I am horrible at drawing ellipses <laughs> with four points like this. They always look horrible. Oh, well, we're going with it. It's better than some I've drawn. I'll it go with better that. better than mine. Okay. Now, the one thing I did not put on this picture are foci. Our foci, we're at zero plus or zero plus or minus three. Yes. Mm -hmm. So where is that? That is up three and down three. Is that does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because my foci are just inside of my vertices. Okay. And I'm not saying you always have to graph your foci, but I'm just again. I'm trying my best to pull it all together here. So what ends up happening is this A value is a vertice and this C value is a foci. Your B values are just showing you how wide your ellipse is. Okay, but A's and B's, you're going to count out either up and down A or left and right A and then the opposite direction for B. Okay, did we do everything there? We were so on the same page today. Good. Parabolas, I didn't feel like that. So, um, Minor axis has length 4. Did my minor axis end up with a length of 4? My minor axis is the shorter axis, right? Does it have a length of 4? Yep. It does. Okay. Well, it's crazy. You know why so. was it? <laughs> okay. Are you saying that we're done here? You're part to get good job. Yes. Okay. So... Monday, we're going to talk about ellipses centered at HK. So these ellipses are ellipses that are no longer centered at 0, 0. They've been moved. The H and K represent how far left or right and how far up or down. Okay. This chart's going to look very similar to the previous chart, except that what's thrown in here? H and K. H and K, just like we talked about with the parabolas. Um, Semi-major, semi-minor, Pythagorean relation, that's not changing. Okay, so I'll still be able to say that my major axis is 2A, and my minor axis is 2B. The left column is still my horizontal one. The right column is still my vertical axis vertical ellipse. Okay. So Monday we will look at a couple examples with those. And then we'll talk about eccentricity and a couple examples with that. Okay.